So uh, I wanted to kind of generate some conversation with you about um, all the teams in the, in the league. And before the season started, we did predictions. Uh, before the playoffs start, we'll be doing predictions. But this is more about uh, what teams have surprised you. What what are the surprise teams uh, of this year, good and bad? Right. And uh, But I don't just want to talk about the surprise teams. I kind of want to ask you the question for every single team. And you can just give me uh, your general thoughts on the team so far this year. And um, so we've got... Basically, I don't think any team has more than seven games left to play. I don't think so. And no team has. I don't think. I don't think I it's think four is the, the least. Four amount. might be the fewest. So and if so, there's no lower than basically that. Basically, the season's over. There's good. Obviously, there's going to be a little bit of juggling. Yeah. People are going to watch this video probably when the playoffs are going on because of just how the way YouTube recommendations work. Um, so just keep in mind that the season isn't over for us yet if you're watching this down the road. Um, but I think the conversation would still be the same even if it was because yeah. there's only going to be a couple of changes as far as that's standings. Right. As well. After so. tonight, there are nine days left in the regular season. So I want to start with the West, if that's okay. Sure. And I'm just going to go from top to bottom as far as standings. So the first team's Calgary. Uh, if we transition to the East, uh, Tampa Bay, are you surprised? I guess I'm not surprised with where they are. Positionally? P- positionally. I agree. I I am quite surprised by the, the altitude that they've attained in the standings with their arc. Yes. Uh, it's incredible. I thought that they would finish hands down first in the East. I agree. They're such a deep team. I didn't think any team had much of a chance of passing them or finishing on, ahead of them. But to see them legging it out like they are, uh, over 120 points before any other team even got to 100, is just mind-boggling. It is quite quite crazy when you think when you think about it, when you think of all the great teams over the past 50 years, if you go back to the Canadians team in 76, 76 was it? 76, 77. They only played 80 games that year, but they had 132 points. Yeah. Uh, mathematically, Tampa Bay can, as we're filming this, tie that if they win the rest of their games, I think. They think they can tie it. Um, and that's but that's pretty crazy in today's hockey because there's so much parity. It's not like it used to be. And, I mean, back then there was, what, I don't know, 12 teams or around 12 teams or 14 teams or whatever it was. Or, yeah, something like um, that. And then you have now you have thirty one teams to compete against, and you're still putting up 122 points as of today when we're filming this. That's ridiculous. So uh, it, it to crazy. me, positionally, like you, not surprised. But as far as altitude and, and and point total here, yeah, I'm I'm pretty surprised. This is a monumentous season for for a hockey fan to to watch a team do this. And for a while, I think they fell back to earth just in the last couple of games, but they were a hundred more goals scored for than against. Oh, it's, They were actually yeah. in three digits. That's rare. Very, extremely rare. Extremely rare. Now, the 76-77 Canadians ended up closing that season with 216 yeah. goals more for than against. But that's just freaky. They only had like seven regulation losses or nine the whole yeah. darn year. But Tampa, they did that at a time, like you say, when there wasn't as much parity. Now with the uh, salary cap and everything else, their payroll is the same as almost everybody else. And look what they're doing with it. Yeah. It's outrageous. It is outrageous. And in a good way. In a good way, yes. In a very good way. Will they sustain that into the playoffs is the question. We saw the Washington Capitals for several years win the President's Trophy or at least win the East. Mm-hmm. And then down they go in the first or second round. It's, it's hard to fathom that Tampa Bay won't go all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals and duke it out. But it is, yeah. It's 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 an interesting situation that they're in. They have so much pressure on them. So really, and every other team has a big bulletin board in their dressing room for all the articles saying there's no way that anyone can beat Tampa Bay this year. Yeah, and that's motivation beyond measure, right there. It is for those other teams. Tampa Bay is going to have a tough go in the playoffs. There, and I know, know that I'm wearing Tampa Bay merchandise right now. I'm actually not a Tampa Bay fan. I wear it out of respect for the fans and and respect for this video and what they've done as to to show that you know I even though I'm not a Tampa fan, I do respect what they've done. And what they've done this year is pretty incredible. So it is. I it's surprised. quite amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Boston. Boston. I thought that. Uh, I guess I, I think they're they're in about the right place for point total. Same here. I just thought they'd be closer to Tampa Bay. <laughs> that Tampa Bay would be closer, you know, falling back a little bit. But Boston's right about where I thought they would be. They are exactly where I thought they'd be. 
yeah. pretty much. Uh, they've played, I would say, even right down to almost the exact point total that mm-hmm. uh, I predicted, and I think you predicted as well, and probably pretty many close, others probably. predicted as well. So yeah. uh, good for Boston. Very tough team. And that's bad news for Toronto, which is it your is next candidate. News. It's not, actually. It's oh. Washington. Oh, it's Washington. <laughs> <laughs> as we're filming, Washington has 98 points and Toronto has 97. Okay. Uh, so Washington, are you surprised? Um, well, defending Stanley Cup champions, and nothing makes you want the Stanley Cup more than just having had it and wanting that feeling again. And, and having to give it back and then yeah. you, you want it again. Now it's up for grabs and that must drive them crazy. Yeah, but there's going to be that little bit of a hangover phase. So I'm actually not surprised of where Washington is. I didn't think they were going to run away with the division this year. Nope. I thought that maybe another team could could dethrone them as far as divisional standings at the end of the season. Uh, and it's looking like even though that's still possible, they have a pretty safe lead as we're filming this. They've got a three-point lead Mm -hmm. uh, on um, Pittsburgh. But Pittsburgh has a really, really easy schedule to finish off the season, so you never know. Um, But anyways, it's uh, it's nice to see Washington there and still competitive after a a cup win. Sometimes you see teams win the cup and they just go... Well, it is, and in this case, they've lost their head coach, Barry Trotz, a Stanley Cup winning coach. And even if you've got all the other ingredients, people must have wondered, I wondered, is how important is the coach in this dressing room? Yeah. With all the, the different personalities you have in that team, especially the, the one we all know the best, uh, number eight, uh, what's, what role does the coach play in all of this chemistry? And look, uh, the coach, I think, has had a very positive influence on the Islanders. We're going to get there. But Washington's managed to still be very, very competitive and a very good hockey team with a lot of the same ingredients that they had before. Mm. And uh, they're, they're playing great hockey. And... Holtby's had a few uh, stinkers. Yeah. Copley's uh, played well in a few games. Every goal, every good goalie has had That's a right. tough But run. the playoffs are a different breed of hockey. When the playoffs begin, it almost doesn't matter what the regular season was because everything just focuses more tightly. You're grabbing the stick. You're, 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 you're going to play this team for at least the next four games, and you're going to hate them. It's such a matchup game. Playoff is playoff hockey is you, you can't beat it. No, you can't. It's you can't beat it's it. It's awesome. So and the minute the playoffs start, you look back at the regular season. And it's like that was just like exhibition. Yeah, that's all that. Was. Pretty much, I honestly. Yeah. Sorry. So are you? You're not surprised with what where Washington is? Not really. Okay, same. Not here. really. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Uh, Toronto. Toronto. Um, Toronto was hard to read. I think we all, we knew all along that Toronto was going to have an offensive powerhouse, especially adding Tavares. Uh, Marlowe's still playing well, and you've got all those kids. Yeah. And you just know Toronto's going to be putting a lot of pucks behind the other team's goalie. But I didn't think that Toronto would have to work so hard and score so many goals to win these games because they have to. I agree because we saw how defensively poor they were last year. Yeah. And you think, okay, well, that's going to pr- improve. It almost really hasn't. It's yeah. almost gone maybe the opposite a little bit. Yeah. And I think that's a little concerning. But I would say generally they're they're a little below where I thought they'd be. Uh, not by much, not by much, but there's, I mean, they're generally where I thought they'd be. So I'm pro I'm not really surprised with Toronto, but I, they've just been losing questionable games. They have. This season. It's, so. And they've had a bad couple of weeks just, yeah. just lately. Like they were keeping pace quite nicely with Boston. It was really a, a contest over home ice. It was, it's not now. It's kind of crazy because if Toronto goes on a losing streak at the end of the season, in these last five games, we'll say. And Montreal, who I know has a very tough schedule coming up, if Montreal wins those games and Toronto loses their games, Montreal could pass Toronto, which is hard to fathom. It's that that's not supposed to happen. That shouldn't happen. That's as as a Canadian f- fan, I don't even want that. To, <laughs> I don't even want that to happen. I don't want to play Boston. I, I, I want to play Tampa Bay. So, uh, and if you're a Toronto fan, and that that happened, how devastating would that be? It would be. It would be completely demoralizing. So It would be curtains. But I bet you uh, some Toronto fans would say, oh, thank God we're going to draw the Islanders or we're going to draw the Capitals and not Tampa Bay. Maybe. Or, 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 Boston. or Boston, rather, but by falling out of that third spot. So there might be method to their madness here. I don't know. Maybe. But. I think this is a team, at the beginning I said, if we had this conversation three weeks from now after the season was over, generally our opinions would be the same. I don't know if that's true with Toronto. Yeah. Because if we had this conversation in two weeks when we know how the season ended, it might be completely different. We might be completely shocked by Toronto based if they fall 
down. I, I still don't think it's going to happen. No, I don't Montreal's either. Montreal's way too hard of a schedule. I don't even think Montreal's going to make the playoffs, let alone pass Toronto. So yeah. uh, if we're just talking in the clouds a little bit. But uh, I, no, I'm not surprised with Toronto as of, t- as of today. Uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Um, I'm, I think they're a little higher than I thought they would be. I, 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 Pittsburgh still has – they're a team that's getting older too. Um, Crosby and Malkin aren't getting any younger. Yeah, you Latang and – not that Kessel is old, but he, it feels like Kessel is old. It feels like well, he's been in the league like 15 years or something. Yeah. But. And, and they, they made some moves, questionable moves, to get rid of young talent like Sprong. Uh, the, the goalie situation is still very much uh, a question mark, I think. Uh, Murray's had injury problems and it's just – sometimes yeah. he, he's been so good lately, but then there's – He'll go on a three-week run where he just lets in questionable goals late in the game, and I don't know. So Yeah, so early in the season, maybe the first couple of months of the season, Pittsburgh wasn't even in the picture. They weren't top eight. They were, like, struggling in the—they were bottom feeders for a while. And just due to the law of averages as much as anything else, here they are. They're, they, they have a good shot at winning the Metro and being the number one seed over there mm. and taking on the wild card from— Maybe the East, maybe it's Columbus, maybe it's Carolina. We don't know. Um, it, there's a chance now that no wild cards come out of the Atlantic. There's a chance. That's act- Yeah, you're right. That's true. Because if Montreal doesn't make it, no one else is making it, right? Toronto's yeah. already in, and uh, Buffalo and Ottawa and Detroit. Florida they're, is not even close. They're, so. Yeah, they're, they're not even close. So there's a chance that it could be five teams from the Metro in and three teams from the Atlantic. Mm-hmm. And uh, in that kind of situation... Where's Pittsburgh and what's their competition like? Uh, they're going to be playing a team that they have some rivalry against. And I don't know if it's going to be an easy path for them. But where they are now is roughly where I thought they'd be. I, I, w- I would agree. I don't think that they're yeah. a surprise to me. They're generally where I thought they'd be. Maybe a couple of points higher, but not a big deal. Uh, the Islanders. Islanders. Um, I'm very pleasantly surprised. I am pleasantly surprised as well, even though they've been struggling to with their play lately. Uh, I think that, oh, I think that it could, they, they, could they have had a better season, obviously, but based on what happened with the Islanders and Tavares leaving, then you've got a new coach coming in mm-hmm. and some other transitional stuff. Uh, I think there was a lot of worry on, on the Island and things are better than m- I would say 80% of the people would have oh, predicted. Yeah. So uh, pleasantly surprised for sure. Because when you look at Tavares's goal output, I think as we're taping this, he has 48 or 49 goals on the year so far. You take those goals. I don't know. I think you're a little high there. You think I am? Yeah, I, think you, I think you're a little high. I think he's I th- like 42, 43. Oh, okay. Ovechkin, Ovechkin's at like, you're not even at 50 yet as we're filming this. So I thought Tavares, I thought, but didn't he get, he got four goals the other night. Uh, so, yes, that's true. I forgot about so, that. Anyway, um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But you, you take those goals away from the Islanders. Now they're being scored maybe by some other people. They've got an amazing uh, young talent team, and they've got Barry Trotz. Yes. And you take Tavares away from the Islanders, and then you still see them in contention, definitely locked into the playoffs. It's just a matter of where they they fall and who they play. Uh, I'm very pleasantly surprised, yep. and and exactly. happy for Islanders fans. Definitely, it's great. Uh, Carolina. Carolina, um, I forget where I had them at the beginning of the year, but I don't think I had them where they are now. I think I think I had them a little bit higher. I think I had them probably a little total. bit lower. I think you and I had a bit of a departure on that. I, I didn't think Carolina was going to have much this year. I pegged them for a wild card spot, I think. Yeah. but and, and that's where they are, which is good. So I would say I'm not surprised. Don't worry about looking up his goal totals. There's 751 people in the comment section that's going to tell us what how many... Goal John Tavares just, has. So I'm it just, doesn't matter. I'm just looking at Twitter. <laughs> well, put, put your phone down. All right, I'll pay attention. Uh, Montreal. Very, very pleasantly surprised. I, I predicted Montreal to tank badly this, this season. I, I think I had them down in the low 70s for points. Uh, I didn't think they'd even have a, close to a chance of getting in the playoffs. And here they are with nine days left. And they're not mathematically out yet. They're still, I agree with you, I think they're a long shot to make the playoffs because of Columbus's uh, better schedule and Carolina's better schedule and a game in hand. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think it's a low percentage that Montreal gets in the playoffs. But to come this close, I think in itself is a bit of a victory. 
I agree. I think I had them in the bottom six or bottom five of the league before the season started, and I think they're 13th or 14th in the league at the moment as far as position. So, yeah, I'm totally surprised in a very good way. So, yeah, Montreal, to me, is one of the biggest surprises of this year, uh, kind of like L.A., kind of like Anaheim. So Maybe not L.A., but we'll say Anaheim. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, Columbus. Columbus, I... Columbus has changed as a team so much since the beginning of the year. I don't know if any prediction would even still be worthy of, of it, talking. It's about. hard to talk about Columbus because it, it's hard to talk about Columbus without the season being over because there's so much that could happen in these last nine days or whatever it is that it's it, it's almost not worth saying anything because it could go either way very easily. Uh, so I, but I would say they have underperformed a little bit, but we knew going into the season that Bobrovsky's contract was going to be an issue. Panarin's contract, there's going to be eyes on that. So, uh, even though I think they're underperforming point wise, the drama in Columbus, I'm not surprised about. Yeah, that's a very good point because Columbus, the last while, the story has been Columbus can get to the playoffs. They just can't get through the playoffs. They bow out in the first round and it's happened Last season, they had a lead in the series. I think they were up two games two to games, none. Nothing, yeah. And they were road games, I think, they'd won in Washington. They were. It? And and then the air comes out. Uh, so Columbus is capable of, of getting to the playoffs, and they loaded up this year not just to get in the playoffs, but to do some damage in the playoffs. And now they're in danger of not getting in the playoffs. Mm. It's They actually seem to be worse off. They've added more talent. They've gotten better on paper, but they've played worse. Mm. Very strange. Very strange indeed. Very strange. Yeah. Um, Col- uh, not Columbus, uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia, they're, they're a little better than I thought they'd be, actually. A little worse for me. Yeah. They're very inconsistent. They are. Extre- and again, these things you can't predict. There's been like nine goalies that have played for Philadelphia this year, or eight, or eight goalies. Yeah. You can't predict things like that. So uh, to me, they're probably about seven to eight points, maybe below where I th- thought they'd be. Okay. So I, I really thought that they might be contending for second or third. I thought they had the potential to contend for second or third in, in their division. So I would say surprised a little bit in a bad way. Okay. Uh, Florida. Florida, I thought they would be better than they've turned Me out to too. be. Me uh, too. Honestly, I really did think that they were going to be better. Uh, such an inconsistent team and just not getting the consistent goaltending and just defensive lapses is just really frustrating hockey to watch at times. If you're if you're watching a game and you are cheering for Florida, just to watch them uh, is frustrating. But then you look at the other end and they got one of the most successful power plays in the league and they've got Hoffman lighting the lamp and just so much chemistry up front. Uh, it's a very frustrating team to watch. And I think that in, in the offseason that's coming up, Florida is going to make the biggest splashes um, in the, as far as roster movements, either they're going to sign some big free agents, the biggest free agents, and I'm talking about Pernarin and Bobrovsky and, and all this stuff, or they're going to make big trades. Uh, I think Florida's really going to make uh, a deep, a deep effort this off season to change their team. So uh, I'm I'm a little, I'm definitely surprised with this team this year. I thought they'd be better, mm. but uh, anyways, uh, Buffalo. Buffalo, I thought would be better. Absolutely, this is a big totally. su- this is a big surprise for me. And I've yeah. said I even said this last year when they were worse than they are now. On paper, this yeah. team is so much better than they positionally are. So it's very frustrating to see what has happened to Buffalo. And I mean, that, look at the first half of the season or the first three months of the season. They were one of the best teams in the league. I yeah. think they we had the jerseys up here in one of the podcasts, and they were first or second at one point, three, four weeks into the season. Yeah. Uh, and now to see them down at 71 points, not even close to being in the playoffs. What happened? Like, big surprise for me. Huge, huge surprise. Huge. Uh, huge, huge. The talent. Uh, and they've they got Pominville back, and they've got Eichel, and they've got, they've got such promise as a team. And this was the year that all of that building and all of those moves that they had made was supposed to pay off. Yep. And it, it, ju- it just didn't, it's, it just it's didn't come together. It's it's, it is frustrating. It, it must be sad to be a Buffalo fan because they probably had so much optimism in October and maybe even into November mm-hmm. that, hey, we're finally, after all this time, after that terrible, rotten deal we got with the skate and the crease 
10 or 15 years or 20 years ago, we're finally back. And uh, not this year. Mm. It's too bad. Exactly. It's, it's really it too sucks. bad. Uh, the Rangers. The Rangers, not surprised. Not surprised because they're going through this rebuild. And they telegraphed that last February. They, did. they said uh, over a year ago, yeah. Yeah. That uh, we're going to rebuild, so don't expect too much out of us. We'll be back later. Yeah. And there's actually <laughs> a lot of promise if you've watched any Rangers games. There's there's some specific players on the Rangers that, like, you can see the kind of the future a little bit long term. There's a lot of promise and a lot of uh, good stuff happening in, in on the Rangers team. So you're going to see a lot of change with the Rangers over the next probably 24 months. Um, and this is a team that's going to compete like they used to. I think mm-hmm. uh, we were talking six, seven years ago, or less than that even. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh, not a surprise as far as where they are and how many points they have. But yeah, uh, New Jersey. New Jersey. I thought they'd be better. Me too. Surprised. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know how much better, but but they they've really disappointed in the last few months, especially. I mean, they get into the playoffs last year. They had a tough com- opponent. They played Tampa in the first round. Uh, it really got smashed pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought they really had the potential to get back into the playoffs, uh, and they are not even close. So uh, uh, definitely disappointed um, and uh, surprised. Yeah. 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 Uh, Detroit. Detroit, not overly surprised. Me either. Because they're doing the rebuildy thing too, and they've had terrible cap problems, and they've had to shed shed players, shed contracts, and – and just do f- financial finagling yeah. to uh, to even stay legal, <laughs> even though they didn't really have much talent to p- to show for all the money that they were throwing into salaries. Not surprised, but I think this is a predictable season for Detroit, and I think they have an extremely bright future ahead of them. I, I agree. I think uh, actually one of the first things that we've that I ever discussed on the channel. It wasn't the first video. It wasn't the second video, but it was probably when the top first or the first ten videos uh, was the Detroit Red Wings and their future. And it wasn't just me who could see this. It was every non-professional and professional sports analyst out there. You look at their cap situation over the next five years at that point, and you could you could see the future. You knew what was coming, and you knew that Detroit only probably had this that year left that we were talking if they even made it that year. And then you could see the you could see the trend over the next couple of years and we're a couple of years into that now. And the trend is exactly where everyone thought it would be. Uh, it's a team that's struggling cap wise. It's a team that hasn't contended for a playoff spot in the past two years or maybe three. I don't even remember now. Um, so not surprised, not surprised at all. They're exactly where I thought they'd be. Yep. They're exactly where everyone thought they'd be. Uh, still doesn't mean they're a bad team. They're a team that's just fixing stuff. So yep. this is how it is. Yeah. Uh, Ottawa, the final team. Oh, wow. The final team, all right. Uh, I didn't think it would be this bad. I I, thought it would be bad, but not this bad. I agree. I really (laughs) didn't think it would be this bad. I thought that uh, the drama was potentially finally over in Ottawa. I knew the Carlson situation was still there. I knew that that was going to be dealt with one way or another this year. Um, And uh, I really thought that that was hopefully going to be it with with Ottawa as far as drama and they were going to get the arena situation figured out and things just got so much worse for Ottawa this year you've got Carlson leaving you've got uh, Duchesne leaving you had the drama of the video of the players in the Uber and then you have Melnick running his mouth you had the Hoffman thing which ended up well for Hoffman in Florida the the drama of his wife and someone else's wife and it's just oh man it's I feel honestly I feel really bad for Ottawa fans they don't deserve it they don't deserve to deal with the owner of Melnick and deal with all this drama. Um, and it's just, it's really frustrating. So uh, I would say that I am surprised at where they are. I did think they make the playoffs. I didn't even think that they contend for a wild card spot, but I'm surprised that their point total is this low. Yeah. So that's all I got to say. And uh, that, I guess that concludes this video. I'm thinking that I might split this video up into two parts because... Uh, yeah, it's been pretty long. I think we're probably approaching about 40 minutes here. Wow. Total, Fans will be so. very patient with us uh, to put through all this. So yeah, I'll probably do... I'll probably split it and split it in the middle and do a, um, an East and a West version. So uh, thank you for joining me for this video. Was, I think we had some good conversations. Um, and thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate that as well. Let us know down below uh, in the comment section what teams surprised you the most. Was it is it Tampa with their crazy uh, point total, or was it LA or Ottawa with their crazy low uh, point total? It's just I want to hear guys' opinions. We read all the comments, so please let me know down in the comment section. Uh, if you're not subscribed, hope you can hit the subscribe button and join us for lots of conversations like this in the future. And we'll see you in those future videos. Adios. Adios.